Mike Moore Media, the first place to hear Rockingham County news and information. It's our monthly program from Rockingham Community College. And on the line today, Jason Collins, EMS Program Director, and Andrew Davis, EMS Clinical Coordinator, are going to be talking about a number of things, including a brand new program starting at RCC. First, let's find out about our guest. Uh, Jason, you go first. Tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Uh, yes, sir. Good morning. Um, so, yes, uh, my name is uh, Jason Collins. I'm the Program Director over the Emergency Medical Services here. Um, was lucky enough um, to get my education here as well back in the early 2000s. Got my EMT and paramedic here, and then I've been here for about five years now. Worked uh, both the EMS and the fire service sector um, over the last uh, 17 years, and uh, still loving every day of it. Yep. Okay. You got you got to love it, haven't you, to do it? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Andrew, uh, let's find out a little bit about you, please. Um, my name is Andrew Davis. I'm the EMS clinical coordinator here at um, RCC. Uh, I've been here since July, so I'm pretty new to the position. Um, I, like Jason, also attended uh, paramedic school here uh, back in 2008. Um, I worked EMS um, for uh, multiple agencies, but spent my time um, in a pretty urban system uh, where I was fortunate enough there to be able to work with the air care team and the tactical medic team. And prior to this position, I was an EMS training officer. So I have a lot of background in EMS and uh, still love it to this day. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you both for the work you do. I appreciate that. We all do. Well, let's start okay. with uh, an overview of the EMT and paramedic programs and what's involved with that. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, sir. Um, so, a um, couple different paths you can go to. Um, as you mentioned a while ago, we are starting a brand new program that I'll mention here in a minute. But um, mm -hmm. where everybody gets started with is the Emergency Medical Technician Program, um, which is the, the first of the programs. Um, that's how you get started. And what they'll do is they'll come in. Um, it's pretty easy to get registered for the EMT class. Um, you go over to admissions. They get a copy of your driver's license. They get a hospital transcript, and that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Besides paying for the course. Okay. Um, and once they get in there, um, that program uh, lasts about four to five months, depending on how days fall, um, two days a week or two nights a week, uh, I'm sorry, and then one every other Saturday um, for about, about four to five months. Um, where, they, where they go in, they learn about, you know, basic assessment techniques, trauma management, bleeding control, uh, vital signs. So just pretty much, you know, getting the hands on the patient and learning the, the basics. Um, and then once they graduate from that, they'll continue on to our paramedic course if they so choose, um, which we encourage highly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, what they'll do there is they'll just another thousand hours. So the paramedic program is a very, I mean, it's a lengthy program. It lasts between 12 to 15 months um, past EMT. Mm -hmm. And what that does is uh, they'll learn a whole lot more medications. They'll learn about cardiology, pharmacology, advanced level procedures. Um, and people will be amazed at what paramedics can, what, what they can do out in the field. I mean, they can do some you know, invasive kind of surgical procedures in some situations, depending on what they need to do. There's really a lot more involved to the, uh, the training and the education that people realize, and isn't it? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. They, um, it, it's amazing what a, a paramedic can do out in the field with little, um, with little equipment to do it with. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you finding um, people uh, coming to the classes there, local, local folks, or are they coming from outside of the area? How does that work? Um, we find them all over the place. Uh, most of them are local. Um, they come from Rockingham or surrounding counties, uh, but we, we've had some that come over the state line from Virginia. Um, we've um, had some, you know, a lot of them in the surrounding counties come, come to Rockingham. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I can see why with the program that you have. How many graduates have you had? And uh, maybe give us uh, some success stories if you can. Um, well, here lately, the last uh, couple of years, we've had, um, I know it's a low number, but paramedic, uh, we've had nine graduates. Um, and 
and that's because it is it is a tough program. You know, when they get into it, you know, some some don't realize what exactly it involves. It takes a lot of your time. You're pretty much living and breathing as paramedics. You know, for this for this year long program, mm -hmm. um, but we've had a very good success. The nine that we've uh, graduated within the last two years have all passed their uh, state test and become paramedics on the first try. Uh, we've even had um, we had one of them that went and tested for their national certification and passed it the first time too with flying colors. Um, so we we've had very good success with that over the the last couple of years. Oh, that's great! And just from what you've indicated there. I'm assuming that probably some start the program with good intentions, but maybe uh, don't make it to the end because it really is so intense. And it is. You know, they don't realize that until they get into it. And, you know, they – it takes a, a lot of their personal time from their life. And, you know, at the end when we do graduation ceremonies, we always make sure that we, we include the family and well as well because – they don't. They don't see their their you know their loved one for pretty much a year because they're doing so many um, classroom hours and clinical hours and riding on an ambulance and you know and I can get Andrew to expand on the clinical and field time hours because they don't realize how many how much time that takes up as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, get more from from you about that, Andrew, please. Yeah. So, in going through um, all the EMS programs you have to do clinical time, and it's different for uh, each discipline. So the EMT basics, they have to uh, complete 48 hours on an ambulance, so that's four 12-hour shifts that they ride uh, performing the basic skills that they learned um, in the EMT class. The AEMT class, which is uh, advanced EMT, which is a transitional period uh, between EMT and paramedic where they can do some advanced life support uh, but not all of the skills that a paramedic can do. The AEMT class has to do 48 hours uh, on an ambulance and 48 hours in the emergency room. During that time, they are assessing patients, giving medications, starting IVs, placing airways, things like that. And then when you get into the paramedic program, uh, the paramedic program is 240 hours on an ambulance and 108 hours in the emergency room. Wow. Um, so it, it, it is um, it's a, it's very time-consuming. Um, and the only way to really succeed is to spend all of your free time studying uh, um, because it is a lot of information uh, crammed in in a 14-month period, you have to think um, in EMS, when you're sitting in that ambulance or at your station, you never know what the call is going to be. It could be somebody from newborn to 100 years old, medical trauma, anything. So you kind of have to be well-versed in anything that could happen. Mm -hmm. I see that, yeah. Wow. That, that training is, is intense. Uh, I had no idea... When you're looking at 14 months, as you're just talking about, uh, well, I appreciate the commitment of uh, of everyone who does this, goes through the program. Where are some places uh, graduates can work if they go through the program at RCC? Well, that is one of the great things uh, in today's um, in today's job force with paramedics. So. Back when I went through paramedic school, really the only thing that was the only option you had was to work on an ambulance and respond to 911 calls. Mm -hmm. Well, paramedicine has grown uh, a lot over the last 15 years. So now you can work um, on an ambulance. You can work in a, in a rural county. You can work in an urban system, depending on what pace you want. Uh, uh, emergency rooms hire paramedics now uh, that fully function so they take patient reports, they start IVs, they give meds. <laughs> they have the same scope of practice they have in the field, but now they work in the hospital. Uh, paramedics can work in doctor's offices, uh, hyperbaric chambers. Um, the other thing is critical care. So paramedics, they can go back to school uh, and achieve their critical care paramedic and then they can work for critical care transport agencies that are transporting 
you know, interfacility hospital patients. And then they can go from that and do air medical. So they can uh, fly on a helicopter. They can fly on a fixed wing, uh, transporting critical patients from scenes to hospitals or from hospital to hospital. So the, the job of paramedic um, is, is more than just on the ambulance now. So I hope that gets out so that more people realize that they don't have to spend their entire 30-year career on an ambulance there is somewhere to go once you get older and, and you, your body uh, kind of starts to slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. There are many, many opportunities. I appreciate you going over that with us. Uh, let's talk about the new emergency medical science program at RCC that starts in the fall. This is exciting, isn't it? It is. We are, we are very excited about this program and that we can offer it here at Rockingham Community College. Um, I know um, on the last podcast I did with you, Mike, we talked about the, the bridge program a little bit for mm -hmm. paramedics that are already certified. They can bridge over to their degree in one year. Yeah. Well, this, this program right here is entry level. So somebody coming off the street with no medical background whatsoever can start into this program, go for two years, and come out with an associate's degree and their paramedic certification. Okay. Um, so, and this is, you know, Beneficial in a couple of different ways. One, um, the North Carolina Office of EMS has announced that within the next probably five years, they're going to start requiring an associate's degree in order to be a paramedic, which can do nothing but progress the profession as a whole. And like Andrew was saying, all these other places that you can go to now to be a paramedic, they're going to start seeing these associate's degree, you know, and it makes it on par with other health careers such as, you know, registered nursing or respiratory therapy that require that, that degree already. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah, they'll come in. They'll start with their basic EMT the first semester with some other general education courses. And then they'll, the second semester they dive into the advanced level uh, stuff. And the next uh, year and a half after that is six semesters total, and they come out, like I said, with an associate's degree as well. Oh, that's great. Well, we're fortunate that RCC is, is offering that program. Let's talk about um, uh, what you call quick health certifications. Uh, tell us, what is that? See, we offer um, several different, um, yeah, those quick health certifications, which a lot of people, you know, an essential skill that I think everybody needs to know is, you know, CPR. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, because that can happen anywhere, anytime. It don't matter where you're at. Um, so I encourage everybody to at least get CPR certified. It's a four-hour class. We have um, at least two a month, and it's usually alternating on either a Friday or a Saturday from 9 to 1. Um, and the, it costs $55. You come in, you get certified, you learn how to save a life. It's a very beneficial class. I encourage everybody to do that. And, and you know, uh, ju ju just that simple CPR class has uh, – there's some some real success stories there, aren't there? Oh, there is. Like I said, I mean, it, it can it can happen anytime, and it don't matter if you're shopping at the local Walmart or you know out to get something to eat. You, you never know when it's going to happen, and having that skill set and knowing that you could possibly save a life one day, I mean, it's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I've thought about taking that for years. I think now talking to you that you've convinced me I need to do this. My wife has had that CPR uh, course before. Uh, what about uh, first aid? Yeah, we also offer um, first aid courses, which is just a general three-hour course that teaches you basic, uh, you know, bleeding control techniques. It talks about allergic reactions and giving um, epinephrine pins, um, and it talks about, um, you know, as everybody's probably heard in the last recent years, we've had a severe opioid crisis around, and it, it talks about, you know, how to help those patients out as well by giving them, um, you know, if they have Narcan available or um, just giving them, you know, breathing form until help arrives. Um, and that's a little three-hour course. It costs about $35. We only offer it once a month, and it's usually right after the CPR class, so you can come in. From 9 in the morning until 5 that afternoon and come out with CPR and the first aid certification. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. All right. And some others, uh, the other certifications you need to mention. There's, um, some other ones we offer um, is Advanced Cardiac Life Support or ACLS or Pediatric Advanced Life Support, PALS, as we call it. Um, and these two classes are more advanced classes that are usually um, catered 